you definitely will remember it. Oh yeah, for sure. Fantastic. The spirit of Emerald on the dance floor. It's one of the biggest competitions in the United States. I recommend to anybody. This is crazy. Really love that too. Because you're looking forward to it. So David, as an ex-champion, um, <laughs> yes, you're an ex-champion. Ex <laughs> um, you must take a lot of pride in where this smooth thing is going, because this is the style that everybody is talking about. Okay, like it was very interesting to go to Blackpool this year and just see the impact that the smooth had. Um, on the European or the, well, the world audience over there. So just give me a, a little idea, you know, what you feel about what it's doing at the moment and where you think it's actually going to go in the future. Well, I think it's on a really good path, right? Um, I think what everybody has to always retain, you know, as we've discussed a little bit about the classical side of it, and the lyrical, musical, and you know, side of it. I think that that's here to stay. I don't see that those intentions of the artistry of the dancing and the quality of the dancing. I don't think that that's going to go away. And I hope that it doesn't, because we all want to have good quality about the dancing, and that's a big word. I mean, that's a big word, and that's something that you have to train to be able to understand in your own way through what you're being taught as to what quality is. Mm -hmm. But. You know, the thing that I think that everybody likes about the smooth, the competitors doing it and as well as the audience. There is so many different styles of dancing that you can do on the floor. You can put ballet, you can put all the modern, you can put all the jazz, you could put the lyrical, you can put the Latin, you can put the ballroom in it and it look right. Mm -hmm. And I think so much of it has to do with the music, you know, that's being played. I, I, you know, artistically and technically, I don't think there's anything in the two waltzes that you can really do but waltz. Because I think that artistically and musically, it just says waltz, measure after measure after measure. If you're not swinging and swaying, it's like leaving out your Cuban motion in your rumba walk. Do you know what I mean? So I don't think that the style should ever go to the point that it takes out the classical intention of the dance. And I think choreographically, everybody has to be extremely careful. How many phrases do they have of classical? How many phrases do they have of lyrical? Do they have a really good mix? Because if it's too classical in the competitive world today, you could look too slow. Mm -hmm. And if it's too lyrical and if it's too this, like especially Tango and Foxtrot, you could just look too fast. So you have to be really careful. It's like a compilation of a, of a piece of music. You have to be so careful about this measure I want to concentrate on the bass. The next measure I want to concentrate on the brass. The next measure I want to concentrate on the melody. So choreographically you have to be very careful that you don't get too involved with one or the other. But I don't think the feeling of the waltz should ever leave. And so I think therefore the technical classical side of being a good dancer is going to really show through in those two dances and I hope that no matter what comes into the future of it that 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 intention doesn't ever go away musically I mean we have to play off what's what's being played and you think about when I won my first US championship in 1995 I won my foxtrot to Doris Day singing in the rain <laughs> I have it on film. I can. I can uh, uh, did, you, did you have an umbrella? I might as well had, but you know that's how much it's changed. And so you know, obviously, if you know, if the if the DJs are going to allow, you know, because they're in control here to a degree, they're the ones that are in control. And so we kind of, you know, we're kind of hoping that that's what will continue to be played because that's what we're at home choreographing and that's what we're at home practicing to. It's such a different feel. And so for me to go in and choreograph a foxtrot to to today's style of music is so, so different than what it was that we are, you know, at the, the time that I was competing. And so that just goes to show you how much that it's grown. Yeah. But the controlling factor was the music. And I don't know whose idea it was to bring it in, but I'm a little jealous <laughs> that it didn't happen for me because I really like it. But I really like it. And so, you know, style-wise, I think everybody has to be, you know, continue to be aware of the classical side of it and you know my coach even you know I had a little break I did 
American style for a number of years, and then I stopped and I did standard for five, and then I went back to the smooth. And my coach that coached me in my standard knew of my smooth history, and he said, I want you to dance that standard just like you danced your smooth. It's a time to be classical, and it's a time to play and be very clear on which one that you are. So when you look at tango, when you look at foxtrot, they need to be very clear about which layer of the music that they're playing on. Because it can be very confusing. You have swing and sway, or you have vertical and you have staccato, so it has to be very clear as to which one that you're showing and which one you're doing, or it'd be real easy to get kind of lost in the musical mix, and then your dynamics on the dance floor are not gonna be as clear. Yeah. Not gonna be as clear. There is probably, it's, to me, it's the most difficult division to judge. I'll be on the panel for the Latin, or I'll be on the division, you know, on the on the panel for the standard. And for some reason, I have an easier time because everybody is kind of doing pretty close to the same thing. In the smooth, forget it. You look across that floor at the semifinal, and all twelve of those couples are doing something one hundred percent, totally, totally, totally different than the other person. And so, the only thing that you have to go by is how well that they've done mm -hmm. what they've done. How committed are they to it? How controlled are they? How connected are they? Have they delivered that with more conviction? Doing this move, this couple is in a natural pivot. This couple is in a split down on the dance floor. This couple is in a shadow position. This one's doing, it's just unbelievable. And I don't think that everybody realizes it until you really stood on that floor to judge it, that it's, it's a tough one. It's a tough one. And I don't think it has anything to do with the fact that I was a previous smooth champion and I know too much about the style. It's not that at all. It's just the fact that everybody's doing something so totally different at any given moment. Mm -hmm. And that's why I said earlier, memorable moments. Those memorable moments that stick in my head before I write your number down on the paper. It's either a good moment or it's not a good moment. <clears throat> and so I just have to have those hits. You know, I have to be able to go back and what did I just see? You know, I, I, I give judges a lot of credit that they can have three bars of music play and they have four numbers on their paper. That is not me. I need, I need more time. I need more time. But I think the style is a favorite style in the ballroom because of all of the different genres yeah. of dance that you can put in it and the emotional content that it brings the audience. I think that they love it. And I have to say how proud I am of the fact that the television show, you know, that television show that we don't watch anymore, <laughs> um, that they've actually done the smooth instead of just sticking to standard. Hmm. Yes, th that is correct. Because I think, for the audience's perspective, if they were just, and this is no, this is no dig to the standard dancers, because I love the standard, the audience would be bored. It's not as entertaining. And we know that Hollywood is all about entertaining. And that's kind of where the smooth is a little bit. How entertaining are you? It's gotta be very entertaining. And that's what I say again, you're gonna be so entertaining if you're out on that floor by yourself. But when you're out on that floor, <laughs> with, five or with 11 others, with 11 others yeah. you're gonna have to do something that says, watch me. Well, uh, I've definitely listened instilled some nice little thoughts in there for you. Oh, you've instilled uh, not only for me, but for anybody who's still awake uh, watching us. Whether they agree with me or not, it's just my perspective. But I mean, I'm trying to, t I'm trying to not speak so much, you know, on a personal basis. I'm trying to speak more in an overall view. Because, you know, it's like politics and religion. You know, that's your opinion and that's your belief. I'll let you do that. And that's, you know, something that I like to keep kind of private as far as my own personal beliefs in dancing because I want to give everybody all the credit in the world for being out there and working hard and training and taking the lessons and trying to make something of their dancing. I am not going to criticize anyone for that intention. But when it comes to the competition as a judge, you have to judge it. You have to say this is this and this is this and this is not and this and this is. And it's a little rough, but we've all been there. We've all been there. You've been there, I've been there, and we know what that all is like. And so I just love giving everybody the benefit of the doubt, and I want to constantly encourage. I never want to feel that anything that I ever say on a lesson, that I ever say to judge. I mean, when I'm judging, I feel like that I can discourage a lot of people by not scoring them well. Yes. And that's a tough place. Emotionally, that's a tough place for me. But I hope that it 
is something that they could take home and that they can learn from and say, okay, well, I didn't get the score from Mr. Hamilton. I hopefully that they would respect my opinion and that they would go home and they would work on it and develop it. That's what I want them to do. Well, I really respect what you've told me. I think that our audience will really respect it as well. Um, I want to thank tomatoes coming at me out of the TV screen right now, so that's good. Not yet. Uh, but, and I have to thank you, you know, for being one of the guys that actually, you know, is making this smooth revolution happen. So, to finish off, thank you so much for taking the time to uh, have a drink with me. Um, and guys, as always, if you want to know what's happening in the world of dancing, you know where to look, www.dancebeat.com. David, thank you so much. We'll do it again. I hope so.